Hey, everybody, we're live at the Pace Studio in New York right now with Samantha Sidley. Samantha, thank you for doing this. It's a pleasure. Yeah, this <laughs> sounds great. I'm really glad that you had a bit of a chance to poke around the tapes and get a get a feeling for the vibe of this place before we go live and make this place much cooler. You're going to share uh, uh, four of your songs from Interior Person, which is out right now on Release Me Records. And uh, what's coming up first today? This um, My first song is called I Like Girls, and it's very gay. Samantha, that sounds great. That was super, super gay, just as advertised. It was <laughs> outstanding. I really enjoyed that very much. Thank you. Incidentally, a lot of young girls like it too, which I love. A lot of parents send me videos of their <laughs> little daughters singing it. <laughs> nice. Uh, can we? So I know this story uh, from having just done a little bit of my own research. I would like you to share it with the internet because it's an outstanding origin story about how the the musical and life collaboration between you and Barb uh, started. How did this, uh, how did the relationship begin? Yeah, so Barbara over here is my wife. Um, <laughs> I was a big fan of hers. I, I like to say I stalked her. And I'm, that's how I met her because she was playing a show. She's actually one of my favorite musicians. And um, we were together for a while and we got married and I wasn't singing, but when I started singing again, she and a close friend of mine, um, Alex Lilly, decided to just kind of write songs for me that was out of, in my style, you know, and they have their own projects, which are completely different styles of music. But I started singing them and Barb was like, I'm going to produce your record. And I didn't believe her. And um, I was just like, yeah, yeah. 
And um, then Inara George started a record label and she was like, I'm going to put out your record. <laughs> and so it all worked out and Barb transformed my childhood bedroom into her own personal music studio and we recorded it there. And that's how that all came to be. And so now I have a record of originals by Barb, Fregasca, Alex Lilly, and Inara George. <laughs> and one by Brian Wilson, which he wrote just for me. <laughs> 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 nice. Well, we're very happy that you're here at the studio doing this today, um, especially on show day because the uh, the residency starts tonight. You're going to be at the Green Room 42 tonight at 9.30, tomorrow night at 9.30, the night after at 9.30. And, That's uh, right. Yeah. We enjoy. came to the Big Apple so we could perform at the Green Room 42 <laughs> tonight, tomorrow. And the next night, well, 9.30. Well, enjoy all of those things. We're stoked that this is part of <laughs> part of your New York trip, this little tape room right here. And uh, there's a lot more music. You're going to do three more off of Interior yes. Person. What's coming up next? Um, this is an Inara George song that she wrote for me, um, just based on stories that I had told her. And it's called Only You. So I just hold up in a box Trying to get some solitude Listening to the sounds of nothing I didn't have any defenses Sleeping all night on picket fences I was a line of cheap cocaine once you begin, you're never the same I threw it all, you're never mean You're just the girl of my dreams Only you could break my heart oh, Only you could put it back together with a missing part us through the the decision to do this to produce it in your childhood bedroom I mean, was that was it like a sentimental thing that it'd be cool to do it in this space was it an aesthetic thing like dude this space just sounds amazing we have to do it in here a logistical thing like why uh, why did that happen that way it's an uh, outstanding decision I'm glad you did it that way but walk us through why that came to be I think being a musician you know there's some years where I have enough money to pay rent and there's some where I don't and so you know, financial. it was financial at first, and you know, we moved into my mom's house, and and um, 
I love my mom's house. She has a really wonderful vibe, and um, <clears throat> I love my mom. We were very, very close friends, so it all works out. And now Barbara's very good. F- you know, we're all best friends. And um, can we give the hand for your mom, who's sitting right yeah, here? Yeah, she's right here. Now? She came with me. I make her go get hairspray and stuff like that. <laughs> she's my personal assistant. Um, just kidding. No, no, I'm not. But um, yeah, so Barb just needed to produce like she needed to make her own studio because she's always, you know, doing music all day. So she started buying gear and just, you know, st- I think it kind of started off. She was storing all her drums in my bed. My bedroom's kind of large. And um, so she was storing all her drums. And then sooner or later, she just started recording herself. And then she like transformed into a studio. But it's actually not a studio. It's not soundproof. And on some of the the tracks, you can actually hear like a, what is it, a leaf blower or something? A saw (laughs) going off, which happened to be in the same key of the song. What song is it again? It's on... um I think it's on only you. No. I think it's, it's on yeah. Only you. I think it's yeah. on only you, which I just sang. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a makeshift studio, but it she's amazing and she made it work and that's awesome. I'm yeah. glad you got to have that experience. I mean, that's I don't know if you hear that elevator flywheel making sounds from time to time that sounds a little bit like a tuba over there. The internet can't <laughs> hear it for sure. I mean, it's just us that can hear it, but um, yeah, soundproofing does not necessarily have to be a perfect hey. thing in order for the vibe to work. Yep. Sweet. Well, good, good, good. Um, thank you for coming and playing. And we're only halfway through. You're still going to do two more off of Interior Person. What's coming up third today? This is a, another song that Anara wrote for me. Um, it's called I Can't Listen. And it's just a duet between myself and Dan Record. I should say, this is Dan Record and Vikram Devastali. Dan, Vikram. Thank you guys. Yeah. They've been playing with me since the beginning. And we're like a big family. And I love them with all my heart. <laughs> Make up my face, make a collage, make like I know me, clean up the house, don't make any noise, walk around slow. I can't listen to a word I say I can't listen to a note I sing I can't listen to anything That comes out of me I'll change my life I'll paint a wall I'll change the channel Pick up a shoe Stand on a chair Look in the mirror I can't listen to a word I say I can't listen to a Trail. I'll book a show 
talk to a stranger and I can't listen to a word I say I can't listen to a note I sing I can't listen to anything that comes out of me Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Dan. It sounds great. Thank you. Um, so we, you got a chance to look at some of these tapes ahead of time, um, and we would be remiss if we did not have the the musical influences discussion because we're standing in front of like sixty plus years of rock and jazz and country music history and more here. I mean, you're standing in front of that Aretha Franklin tape from the Fillmore with Ray Charles on it, and there's uh, you know I'm telling you about the Ella Fitzgerald tape. Can you talk about some of the artists who have been uh, important to you? over your entire life or maybe if you wanted to get more specific who's been really important to you during the when you were writing and co-writing um, interior person yeah I, I mean I've listened to that Aretha live at the Fillmore probably 5,000 times um <laughs> I'm not joking I'm I'm kind of I'm a singer singer I love singers um especially ones that are like doing stuff like 40 years ago. <laughs> um, We've got Sarah Vaughn live at Carnegie in the other room also, which is outstanding. Which all of her live stuff is my favorite because you can really hear just how virtuosic and special she was. Um, apparently she had really, really terrible stage fright, which I, I love that note because I have terrible stage fright. <laughs> but um, so it happens to even the the greats. I, I call her, I call those kind of singers like in the top one because I can't, I can't like categorize them. They're just like otherworldly and beyond. This morning over coffee, we were talking, if you had a gun to your head, who would you pick? Nat King Cole or um, Frank Sinatra? And I was like, I would die. Like I would be shot because <laughs> I can't, I can't pick. <laughs> yeah. So I think I can, Nat. Nat? Yeah. because of the piano playing. I mean, he was also no, one of the best I piano players. I love Frank. I mean, I love them. They serve different feelings for me. Um, they they charge different moods in my body. But yeah, I'm a I'm a dork for singers. <laughs> I really am. I I go crazy. I go out of my mind. So this is kind of making me go out of my mind. And also, John Lennon isn't there. Mind games. I've also like pretty much saved my life <laughs> at certain points in my life. Yeah. Well, you are, I know you have things to do tonight, but if you, if you've got any extra time to hang out, you're more than welcome to hang here and, and nerd out on tapes. There's two Thank whole other so rooms much. of stuff over there that you're welcome to, to go through, uh, before the show tonight, you've to. got, uh, this residency starts at the green room 42 tonight. Yes. And, um, and we really appreciate you coming by at this place and there's still more music. There's one more song from interior person. What's happening last today. This is a really dirty, naughty song. Um, from my record, it has it has that little rated R thing next to it. Yeah, Spotify told me it was explicit. <laughs> yeah, it's explicit. That's right. That's the word. Um, and um, it has a special story, which we'll be um, explaining if you come to the show tonight at Green Room Forty Two at nine thirty. <laughs> um, but yeah, hit it, boys. It's oh okay. It's called um, I got a butterfly in my ass. <laughs> I have a phone in my side And a chip on my shoulder I had a cramp in my style And a burden like a boulder and now that I've outlasted, I put the things in the past. I got a butterfly in my ass. I had a bone to pick, and so I lost my stride. My pony lost its only trick. 
so I lost my ride And now that I've outlasted I put the things in the past I got a butterfly in my eyes Me all your questions And I promise not to lie The girls are in the bathroom And they're not there to cry You see, they're K-I-S-S Had a rain on my parade, but it didn't quench my thirst. Was at the end to my rope, and at the end, oh yeah, oh, that's the worst. I stood on pins and needles until my bubble burst. And now that I've outlasted, I put the things in the past. I got a butterfly. In my eyes, me all your questions And I promise not to lie The girls are in the bathroom And they're not there to cry or pee They're K-I-S-S-I-N-G Mariposa en mi culo If shit gets to you, just stick it through And soon you'll have a butterfly too In your ass Right. This has been great. Samantha, thank you. Barb, thank you. thank you. Dan, Vikram, this has been great. Uh, have a great show at the Green Room, 42 tonight. There are um, all ages songs. There are filthy adult songs. There's going to be an outstanding night for everybody and tomorrow night and the night after. So really enjoy those. And we're stoked that you were able to come by and share this music with us today. And best of continued luck on Interior Person. It's out in the world on Release Me Records right now. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks.